So, hello, I'm Daniel. And, uh, I'm here today to talk about a tool that is helpful to measure the things that we are being talking today, which are sources of interference and sources of, of noise. Uh, so, <clears throat> USC noise is an AGPC metric that refers to the noise that applications or that the operating system imposes to a workload that is supposed to be the only one running, right? And uh, the OS noise tracer is a tracer that tries to measure how much OS noise this uh, tracer is suffering from other applications. Uh, it can be either in the kernel or any application in the on that target CPU. So <clears throat> the, this tracer in specific, it's not only the tracer, but it is the tracer and the workload. So the tracer uh, simulates uh, uh, the classic use, uh, AGPC use case, dispatching a thread per CPU, and this thread busy loops and tries to try to detect when uh, there are two reads of the time that has bypassed a threshold. When this threshold is bypassed, it says that there, there was a noise here. So, the workload, it, it does this measurement based on the time that was stolen from it. So that is the view of a, a, a workload running. But <clears throat> together with the workload, uh, we have some uh, instrumentation that we do that we hook to some trace points in the kernel and we can extract information from that. And uh, one, one of these information is how many times that thread was interrupted uh, either by an NMI, an IRQ, a soft IRQ, or by threads. So anytime the workload, the, it, it reads the, it, the time and how many times it was uh, preempted by any kind of task that we have on it. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and uh, this is helpful for the book and I will show uh, some outputs of the tool, it will be easier to understand. So it, it traces these, this noise of, of uh, of these tasks that can happen on a CPU. And it also aware of the nesting that we can have. Like I can have my workload being preempted by a thread that can be preempted by an IRQ that can be preempted by a, a, a NMI. So, uh, and all the traces that are generated by trace, uh, by this tool, they are aware of these and they are all the computation uh, to, to reduce, to remove one interference from the other. So the idea here is that I can interpret as much data as I can in kernel, so I can read those trace points uh, clearly without having to, to waste the time going back and forth on, on the trace. But I, I will show an example of the output. And, uh, and there is also a user space tool, which is the RTLA that does an, an interface for this trace. So here is the, the basic summary of the tool. Uh, I can go to the tracing interface and, and enable it. And, uh, and after enabling it, I, I can see the summary output of the tool. So it says here that <coughs> the tool was able to, to take this amount of time, here is, is in seconds, right? In, in microseconds. And in this amount of time, the total noise that the tool perceived is was this. And here is the percentage of CPU available. And among all, all, all these noises, the largest ones, this so this is the sum and this is just okay from all the noise what is the maximum one but because i also do uh the tool also does uh this instrumentation it can also say the sources of this noise right it can say it was hardware oh and, and there, there, that's a thing i explain later uh, if it was uh, an mi an irq a software IRQ, or a thread so why i'm saying that there i have here the hardware right because he, he, here is the, this one is the summary that is printed uh, periodically by the tracer. But I also have a, a set of trace points on this tracer that prints the occurrence of any source of noise. So for example, here I have an IRQ noise uh, from the local timer. This is the start time and, and how much time it took. And uh, once uh, the workload detects a, a interference that was higher than a given threshold, it, it will print it as well. But 
instead of only printing the, the time that was stolen from the <clears throat> from this application, it also prints how many interference occurred to, to cause it. So in this case, this eight microsecond interference was caused by these two previous uh, uh, sources of, of noise, right? The IRQ noise and the thread noise. And uh, <clears throat> this interference number, it's synchronized inside the kernel locklessly. So I'm sure that it was just these two, one here that caused this interference, you know, not the previous one. This, this is useful while debugging because it, uh, it removes sources of dubs and, and discussions uh, of why this happened, right? But because, I'm, because it also uh, sums up the amount of interferences, I can get cases when the hardware caused the, the noise. So if no uh, interference happened and the, the workload was printed, I can safely point the, the culprit to the hardware. That can be either in the real hardware when like a, a thermal throttling happens or when SMI happens and or virtual machines when the, the gas is printed. So the two, the two already works. Right for for some case, but uh, it, it's a pretty new tracer. It has less than one year, and and there are some uh, requests that I see from people and, and myself as a user, and uh, <clears throat> and I would like to get feedback from people to know uh, where to start and and get also help from the people to to improve this tracer. So the things I, I heard more about <clears throat> what is missing is the thing that we have been discussing here, uh, IPI tracing. So here I, I can see that this noise happened, but I don't know who generated this noise. And, uh, and also, I, I will enter in each of these topics uh, there, but, and also integrate with workspace, with virtual machine. I have been talking with Paulo Bonzini about this and integration with CI. Uh, so, regarding user space, so the, the workload that I have now, it's uh, in kernel. Uh, it, it's good, but it's only measuring the time that was passed. And, uh, and many times the, the OS noise doesn't measure only the time, but the work that the tool was able to do, <clears throat> like processing a given kind of workload or processing packages and those things. So, it would be useful to transform the tracer something generic that I could plug any workload on it. Uh, and uh, it, it has one downside that I will lose the synchronization between the kernel trace points and the workload because I can do this locklessly inside the kernel, but I do do this using uh, local CPU variables and uh, barriers. I, I would lose that. Uh, but uh, I would gain the benefits of running any workload with the tracer. And uh, one, one of uh, the challenges doing this, uh, the first one is that I would have to have an interface to, to register this workload. So nowadays I have a structure inside the kernel that says that this is the PID of my kernel workload that I consider my workload. I, I need to find a way to add an interface to overwrite that information. And, uh, and and for example, the PID of the workload that I want to measure, <clears throat> Steve. So uh, one one of the possible interface I was thinking was a, a file inside the TraceFS that I, I could uh, register the PID of the workload. By default, it would be the PID that I create in the kernel. Um, by default, like you said, your PID. So basically, you just want to be able to say, I want to monitor a single thread that's user space yeah. for everything. Uh, so kind of like, um, yeah, I mean, we have the event PID. It's basically like set event PID. So can you just put set work PID? I, I would say set, call it set. Keep okay. The naming convention set, the same. Set for but, both, yeah. but yeah, we do that for Ftrace. We have we could trace a single event from tracing. We could set the, a single event from events. Uh, since OS noise, I have no problem with keeping the same. It's already been done. Okay. Precedent. 
Oh, good. So the, one of the points is that for this workload, <coughs> we, need, we need to do things like uh, uh, this workload needs to be pinned to a CPU. And you have a separate, uh, okay, because so, well, it, well, wait, so you want the, so wait, the PI, so you're setting a PID here to set the workload, so what you're monitoring, correct? Correct. So what are you, you're telling it to pin, to set the affinity of the workload or set the, just the tracing of the PID <clears throat> or the CPU? No, because generally, the, this use case, <coughs> We have the workload pinned into a CPU, but but yes, we might might have a, a set of tasks that we're monitoring. Well, yeah. first of all, well, there's set there's task set. I don't see a reason why you have to pin it. You're looking at the the, the kernel knows when when the, the the PID or any of the threads belonging to that process we're interested in, or on any CPU. Just carry it out. It knows it as well, so so you get it. So you get it via the uh, via the PID or PID or process ID, whatever you call uh, you go for, uh, and it doesn't matter on which CPU it runs. Yeah. I mean, even migration <laughs> is a noise. Even migration is a noise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So even migration is a noise. So I mean that. I wouldn't restrict it to be pinned because that's that's a totally different decision. I mean, you might want to to see the effects of can I actually afford migration? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I, I was limited because of doing implementing the kernel, but yes, I, I can also lift that restriction. Yeah. So I mean, all you need is filter on the PID. Okay. But then, or but then, the thread ID, whatever you you you, you choose, task ID. But yeah, but, but thinking aloud, I could have two tools that I'm measuring the the noise one preempt in the other. I might have to do with that case if I allow migrations. If I have because I can have two two workloads in the same yeah. CPU. Yeah. Yeah. No, but th th this makes my life easier because I, I would not need to. No, no, in this case, it helped me. <laughs> no, because if I had to, to force pinning the CPU, I would have to take more care and, and mess up with the CPU masks and, and like setting the, 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 the tag in the, in the task struct to saying, do not migrate it, this is a pin. This sounds like an implementation issue, not something that should be exported to the user space so I think, or to the yeah. interface. Yeah, right I, I can leave, I think it's just better to leave to these restrictions. So, and and then <coughs> when this, this this the task dies, I just return to the kernel workload. So if you put in two tasks into this workload, uh, question like you said, and they interrupt each other, are you? I mean, the output that you have is it per task that you have? So you say this task was interrupted. So is it? Does each task have its own like structure now, of information yeah. that's being? Um, the point is that now I, I'm measuring things more uh, on a per CPU basis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah. You don't want to look at it on a per CPU base. You want to look at it on, uh, because that's global. Uh, yeah. You want to look at what happens in the context of a monitor task. So which is, uh, it starts when you get scheduled in, or it, in principle, it starts when you, the wake up event happens, and then you have the noise until you get scheduled in, the noise until you go out to user space, yeah. and then anything up to the point where you go back to schedule, voluntary. Yeah, so, yeah. Not the involuntary. So you want to pin it on the task because that's, your, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what you're observing. You're not observing CPUs. <laughs> I don't care when I, I have a single task which I care about and what happens on some other CPUs is completely irrelevant. Yeah, no, in no, this okay, case, okay, I okay, wait, I mean, to, let me change uh, like what Thomas is trying to say to something else. Because I, I think you're focusing too much on what the current default, which is the kernel workload, which is, I, is it looking at this thing and, and the task PIDs, it sounds like you have you know, eight CPUs, eight tasks, each pinned to a CPU, correct? Correct. So 
the, the um, paradigm that Thomas is saying is, well, okay, the paradigm you're looking at is I'm looking at it per CPU. Yeah, and, so, and Thomas is saying he's looking at it per task. But you're both, yeah, correct, because everything's pinned. So yes, each CPU has a task. So what Thomas is saying, let it migrate. And only do the track. So by default, when you're doing it internal, you pin every, you, it will say, okay, by default for this standard, we eight CPUs, create eight tasks, pin each one, so we see everything. But in reality, it's measuring it per task, not per CPU, even yeah, though you yeah. can see it that way. Yeah, yeah. no, no I, I've made this uh, per CPU because the traditional AGPC use case is a per CPU test. There's a test model that is in this way. And uh, generally, people use test pin it to CPU in the use case that we are yes. seeing, for example, at, at Red Hat customers. Yeah, but, but a that's... more general use case would be per test. But that's 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 simply uh, covering it because if you look at it at at it per task and the policy for the task is to be pinned, then you will see all noise events on the particular CPU yeah. in context of that particular yeah, task. So it's it's more generic and it's more, yes. uh, it's a so you're mean. not inflicting any constraints on the workload. You can just use a free floating. A, a task and, and figure out how, how well that behaves, uh, depending on. Yeah. And, and for HPC, where everything is pinned, fine, it just what, works. What, what I can do is, is something similar to what we added to the hardware lab, which is having modes. We can have a mode which is per CPU, and we can have a per task mode. I, I don't think you need that. I mean, you could just, like you said, if, it's just, if you care about per CPU, you just pin everything to a CPU. But really, I don't see any use case where you care about a task bouncing between CPUs and you care about each CPU, not the task. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a hand mic too that Judy Well, I was just uh, thinking that you can also have like equal number of threads to the number of CPUs. So if you're worried about missing noise on other CPUs or mm -hmm. something, like don't pin it, but have the same number of threads and then let them migrate. I don't know if that <clears throat> aligns with your design or not, or yeah, now, but now, it's just uh, something new. Now, now we, we dispatch the workload by the CPU mask and the number of threads that we dispatch is based on the on CPU mask. So if my CPU mask has uh, five CPUs on it, I dispatch five threads. That, that's why I probably need a mode so I can register. So well, why don't you just, when you create it, you you pin it, like you could do that and use, why have this interface force the pinning? You could just sit, use task set and just set those things or yeah, just have task set, each one gets it to its own CPU and then you know, run it or, yeah. so that could all be done in user space. Yeah. And just FYI, if you want to trace children, so basically you could put one PID in there and you want to trace all the children. That's the ftrace set, ftrace PID and set event PID mm -hmm. both have an option where you could say, okay, I want to set the children. This is that that right PID that we're talking about with the FII. It, what it, oh, that's right, that yeah. thing it does, it, there's a whole infrastructure there that will allow you that it attaches to the fork um, trace point. So when it splits, it will add it automatically, it will add the child mm -hmm. automatically to the list. And when it exits, it will remove it from the list. So you could just hook into that same infrastructure. Ah, so well. I have, a, so you, you're saying that you already have the infrastructure also to remove it from the list. Yes. And can I have an a callback? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yeah, because that, that would be one of the points here. And then you like you said, well, you want to trigger, like I saw that you want to trigger. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, problem. Yeah, that's already been done. Good. So, <clears throat> and, and another, <coughs> sorry, one of the limitations I said of the, <coughs> of the, of the current tracer is that I can trace uh, when a workload uh, was printed, but I don't know the root cause of it. And I saw that on ARM, we can have the, we have these trace points and there's these API arrays and it points to any time a, a API is raised. So,
It sounds like it says somebody like should <laughs> should educate the 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 orm people with a large stick uh, because the trace point for sending an IPI should have been in the in in the generic code where we actually have the functions to do so, and it's totally uninteresting which of the five gazillion variants of how you, how to send an IPI on a particular. Uh, incarnation of hardware uh, you're you're using. So the interesting part is, what is the calling contact which actually sent, wants to send an IPI via SMP function call or whatever, uh, one of the or the, the the reschedule IPI or or whatever. So you see, so you want you want the the caller of this uh, to be traced. So the, the trace point should actually be in generic code and not somewhere in the architecture. That's totally nonsense. Well, that's the sending of the, I think also you want the trace point in the IPI when it enters and when it exits. That's a different story. That's on the receiving end, right. but we're talking about the sending up. Are, are we talking side. about the sending of IPI or are we talking yeah. about the, 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 the interrupting? Interest, no. the interest. We do not have a trace point on the send side right now. But the ORM people obviously put one in, and they put it totally on the wrong place. Well, that's the IPI raise, right? Yeah. Well, okay, that's where you're triggering. Yeah, that, 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 yeah that's I mean, my I mean, if you so 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 if you if you look at SMP function call, you go through the generic code, and then you end up in in some right. random so, place in hardware. I, I can tell you why they did it this way is because looking at it, they did it, to, they grouped all three together. The raise, like they made it like a soft IRQ, raised, entry, exit. Yeah. And the only way to get the raise is in the, uh, or not the raise, the entry and exit is in the architecture specific code. So they probably said, well, uh, but they probably did the entry exit and they just included the raise right. together. So that's probably what they didn't even think about putting it in the generic code because they probably didn't think it made sense to have just the raise and not having the entry and exit. Yeah, so, it, make, it, it kind of makes sense, but it it's anymore. pretty stupid because we have about uh, 500 gazillion ways how to, to how to implement no, actually IPIs. That. So yeah. so I think well, I think the solution is done. here is to move that that um, tra trace event those three trace events into the generic code and let anyone implement it. But then the two IPI X and entry they may not ever be implemented. Right. Um, but they could exist, but never. Well, that's the thing: is if you move it, if you move it in there, the trace points will exist, but not be implemented. Yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to do I that. mean, the, the the question is, um, I haven't looked at the at the ORM implementation. I have to look at it. Uh, whether that's a catch all entry point, because uh, on X eighty six we have different entry points for for SMP function call or for uh, the reschedule yeah. IPI on purpose. Because the risk critical IPI is basically a knob, <coughs> while the SMP function call has to do actual work. So, I mean, what we need to do, because the way the trace points is, because they're grouped as the IPI group, trace schedule, or the trace event group, is the IPI trace event group. So you really want them all in the same header file. Um, so that's Yeah, but then right. keep no, them. No, I mean, we're just going to, so what we do is we can move it into the generic and put under each one, uh, if def, um, you know, IPI exit exists, you know, or has IPI exit trace point and put an if def around each one. So we have one, make it so with like for the raise, we have one generic one that everyone uses, but because the exit and entry um, are unique, I mean, the raise won't need an if def because it'll be right. implemented there, but we can't have except the entry and for, exit. Except for UP. Right. So, well, then we need an if def around it. So, um, so, because we don't want those trace points to exist if there's no if nothing calling it, because mm -hmm. people will say, "Oh, it has an IPI exit," and but then it never gets hit because there's nothing implemented on IPI exits or entries, and that will confuse people. So, we, we, we could hook them to the IRQ vector trace points. Then I run. <laughs> it, it was a joke. But that's why it's in the ARM <laughs> architecture code only. But to move yeah. into the uh, <clears throat> generic code, we'd actually have to put if defs around it. So it only gets implemented if actually something's hooking to it. Otherwise, they will get shown to user space and nothing calls it. Cool, zero IPIs. We raise tons, but we never execute them. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. Zero cost. Perfect. It's kind of like the old, uh, we're not going to test for COVID, so we don't have any cases. <laughs> Wait, I think for more slides, okay. This is the old version of the presentation. And, and finally, that's something that I've been discussing with Paolo Bonzini, <clears throat> which is <coughs> nowadays we have like, a, a, we identified the hardware noise uh, as a, a gap in time, but uh, we, we don't know what caused it, this noise. But when it's, it's a hardware, we might try to fight some SMI counters and all those things. But when it's a higher hypervisor, we have no clue of what is happening. So one, one of the ideas is try to, <clears throat> to integrate the hypervisor to notify that, okay, the DV CPU was preempted. And this was the cause of why it was preempted. So I could get uh, uh, an information. Okay. Yeah, but it can do that on the host. Yes, but I'm running it on the guest. Yeah, so what you do is you run trace command agents on the host. And from the guests, there's a proxy, there's the new tra trace command. In fact, we do this, uh, I, I implemented this just recently where you could put the agent on the host and have the guest actually connect to it and say, give me events from you. Mm. So you get the guest actually gets the guest trace.data and the host trace.data. So you could say, give me all the KVM events. Okay, so, so the idea would be to not do anything in the guest, just trace and, and then merge the traces. Yes. Yeah. It already exists. exists. <clears throat> All your problems solved again. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. No, it's good. That, that's the idea. It's even better. So, uh, and can I? Do, do you have these options as the in the trace command library? Yes, it's it's part of trace command. Okay. There are three point one or two, I think. Just. Uh, but um, can I integrate it on RTLA? Um, to have a single like to have a single point of entry. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we only have a couple minutes left, so we're yeah, no, not... I, I, and I'll talk about this in, yeah. the, in the second part of this presentation, the real time summit. Okay. And yes, just just to finalize it, <clears throat> it's useful to know when the, the VM uh, was was printed by the host mm -hmm. because we have all these uh, CI infrastructure that they run on, on VMs. But we cannot like measure the OS noise there because you don't know if there's a problem in the kernel that we are trying or if it's in the host where we are running it. If we could understand from the guest that it was a preemption in the host, we could just discard that data and, and carry on. They try to do CI on virtual machine. <clears throat> that, that, that's why it would be nice to have this information uh, in the guest. Yeah, this, these were my points. I'm glad they are easy. Thank you.